Hi, my name is John Mark Young. I'm the President and Chief Investment Officer of Whitaker Myers Wealth Managers, and I'd like to welcome you to another installment of the What We Learned in the Markets This Week video. Remember, our aim is to provide you, our valued clients, with a brief video giving you information that's helpful to your understanding of the markets from a biblical worldview with no financial agenda, which makes us uniquely different from the news media in America. So let's talk about the four things we learned in the markets this week. And point number one, here we are again. It feels really good to say there was another positive week in the markets. On your screen, you're seeing the returns of three of the index we tracked most closely. And surprisingly, the market rose for the week and day on Friday, even after Amazon posted earnings on Thursday night that were disappointing in terms of their fourth quarter sales guidance and their weaker than expected third quarter revenue. So all the Amazon investors had a pretty bad week. However, the S&P 500, which those of us that follow the, the Day Ramsey vernacular, remember that is our growth and our growth in income. Half the companies in the S&P 500 are growth companies. Half the companies in the S&P 500 approximately are growth in income or dividend companies. That was up 3.95 for the week. The tech heavy NASDAQ, which is more of your growth stocks, that would be a growth fund, was up 2.24 for the week. And our aggressive growth stocks, which is comprised of the Russell 2500, were up 4.89 for the week. This is a great point in the year to look at the returns for the entire year for those three indexes. The S&P 500 is now down 18.15% for the year. The NASDAQ has fallen 29.04 for the year. And the Russell 2500 has dropped 17.85 for the year. Point number two, gasoline consumption in the U.S. is one indicator we see as high-frequency data on the state of the U.S. economy. If demand for gasoline goes down, it's because economic activity, such as traveling for business, traveling for pleasure, moving goods through freight, all these sort of things is starting to slow down. According to the U.S. Energy Information Agency and, and our friends at the research company Datatrek, who we rely on very heavily, we can see that last year's gasoline consumption was running at about 9.4 million barrels a day. In contrast, today we're at about 8.8 .8 million barrels a day. Now, if you do some quick math, that's a 6.4% decline. And most of that decline can be attributed to the prices you know, that went 10 to 50% higher from last year's numbers. However, prices have recently stabilized, which is helping to create a more stable U.S. economy. Rapid price increase is, are a major shock to the economy, as we saw in quarters one and quarters two this year. Prices are at a high now, are high now, but, but they're stabilizing. And that's, that's the critical piece, is that they're stabilizing. They're not bing-ponging all over the place. During recessions, you will start to see demand drop significantly for oil consumption. And that's what we saw in 2009 and 2020. And then we begin to see the prices start to come back down. Right now, there's materially no significant drop in demand, which would say we are not seeing recessionary signs from that standpoint. Now, I'm not going to count this as a point, but here's a brief, brief point we're going to make here. The Cleveland uh, nowcast inflation model is something I talk a lot about. It's still predicting an 8.1% headline inflation year over year and 6.6% and .6 core inflation year over year growth. These are unchanged from the September readings and actually came down from last week's readings. Thus, inflation is not growing. That's good news. But their model also said it's not declining. It's basically staying flat. We want to start going down. Point number three. Last week, I gave you numbers from the Atlanta Fed's GDP Now model. And Thursday, we had the GDP released from the Commerce Department. Now, just as the Atlanta Fed's model predicted exactly why I watched this, the U.S. economy grew at 2.6% in the third quarter after declining the last two quarters this year. Here's an interesting stat we found from the report. Trade, which is certainly the movements of goods from our country to other countries, contributed most to the third quarter's turnaround as the US exported more oil and natural gas with the war in Ukraine disrupting supply chains in Europe. Now they're counting on us more. About two thirds of our economy is consumer spending, you and I, spending money on goods. And I promise you, if you're doing that spending on debt through credit cards or the like, Dave Ramsey and I are going to come pinch you in your sleep. So don't do that. But that grew, consumer spending grew in the third quarter, albeit at a slower pace than, than in the prior quarter. Remember, GDP is important because it measures goods and services produced in our country. It's telling you and I 
how our economy is growing or if it's going the other way, if it's contracting. We should be, of course, constantly growing outside of a recession or a depression. And point number four, we are in the midst of earning seasons right now. Companies are reporting earnings, and this is a very important to the market because stock prices follow earnings. Now, they follow a lot of different things, but fundamentally, they typically come back to earnings. This is what you're paying for when you buy a stock. You're paying for their cash flow and their ability to create future cash flow. This earnings season has been good, not great, but good. And maybe that is great because all the perma bears out there are those people that I love to hate. The sky is falling. We're all going to be broke. My spirit animal is your. I thought earnings would just be terrible. But this last week, Apple reported their fiscal fourth quarter year earnings on Thursday that beat expectations from revenue and, and earnings per share. Facebook's parent meta platforms lost nearly 25% of their value on Thursday when it said costs would continue to climb. The unit that's uh, in charge of leading their new metaverse initiative uh, will continue to see increased losses, they said. And on top of that, on top of all those bad news, advertising spending is starting to pull back, which is a key source of their revenue, which is gonna, uh, which dropped it for the second quarter of this year. And then as discussed above, Amazon had weaker than expected earnings and revenue and gave a not so rosy forecast for the fourth quarter leading to their weekly loss, as you see on your screen. So those are the four things we learned, maybe five if you count the one I threw in there on inflation, but the four things we learned in the markets last week. If you have any questions about how these four things or more impacted your personal situation, please go to the uh, notes section of the YouTube video to see a link to schedule a meeting with any of our advisors, as well as there's a link to the blog section of our website where we put some great content, including new content this week that you can read from our financial coach and financial advisor and a nice little piece that I wrote on how to avoid capital gains on your rental properties or commercial properties, a really unique strategy and, and opportunity there as well. So we appreciate your continued trust in us. If you have any questions, reach out and do us a favor. The YouTube algorithms, the, the Google algorithms that own YouTube, they only do well for us if you smash that like button. So go ahead and smash that like button, share this video, help uh, us, and our desire to have a heart of a teacher reach more people so they can understand what happened in the markets this last week. Thanks so much.